My name is Michael Manns. I am hepatologist at Hanover Medical School, Hanover, Germany. We are writing uh, with two other colleagues a review article on autoimmune hepatitis. It's one of the major autoimmune liver diseases. This means a disease where the immune system is attacking the patient's own liver. This is a disease of unknown cause. It's a chronic self-perpetuating disease which may lead to liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. 4% of all liver transplantations in Europe and the United States are done because of end-stage liver disease caused by autoimmune hepatitis. First of all, autoimmune hepatitis has been defined as a disease entity in 1951 by Waldenström, a Swedish colleague. Since that time, we treat this disease with immunosuppressive drugs, first with corticosteroids and then in combination with azacyprine. Recently, novel drugs, mainly coming from the transplantation field or from the treatment of immune-mediated diseases of rheumatology, were explored in autoimmune hepatitis. But we have to better define the patients who should be treated. We have to better define the response to treatment. And for those who do not respond to the standard of care, which is steroids alone or in combination with azacyprine, we have to find new therapies. We really have to acknowledge that the regimen we have so far and the drugs we use so far have limited use. They're associated with toxicity. Not every patient is responding. So there is a need for novel therapies, in particular for those patients who do not respond to the standard of care with steroids alone or in combination with isocyprine. The first milestone was describing the disease entity. This is 1951, as mentioned before, and this is decades before the first virus has been discovered causing viral hepatitis. Certainly in the early years, we have treated patients as autoimmune hepatitis for a disease that may have been caused by hepatitis C. So it's only since the discovery of the hepatitis C virus with the most sensitive antibody and PCR technology to discover the virus, we really can define autoimmune hepatitis and exclude all kinds of viral hepatitis. We have also to acknowledge that there is no specific test for this disease. It's a combination of clinical and laboratory findings and the exclusion of other causes of liver disease that make the diagnosis. So this is the first problem we face in this disease. The second is response to treatment historically. For many, many years, uh, response to treatment was defined as reducing transaminases, ALT, AST, below two times the upper limit of normal. And we have learned that this is not optimum. The last guidelines, international guidelines, were published by the American so Association for the Study of the Liver. And this was in 2010, when for the first time, normalization of ALT and normalization of IgG was defined as the endpoint of treatment. Then the therapies, steroids alone or with azacyprine, all the studies where the guidelines, including the latest one of 2010, are based on, were uncontrolled. It was until 2010 when the largest ever prospective study for the treatment of autoimmune hepatitis was published comparing um, prednisone in combination with azacyprine with a topical steroid, budesonide in azacyprine. It really has shown that budesonide, in contrast to prednisone, is able to induce and maintain remission with less steroid-specific side effects. And this indicates another problem, and that is that all these drugs have significant side effects. I think the challenge for the future is to better understand the pathophysiology of this disease, the mechanisms leading to this disturbed immune system in order to more specifically intervene with these intracellular pathogenetic processes and signal destruction pathways or with surface receptors of the immune system uh, so that we really more specifically can treat this disorder which otherwise, in the majority, can be uh, treated successfully with steroids and ethocyprine. The final goal has to be that we will be able to treat successfully every individual patient with autoimmune hepatitis, that we prevent progression of the disease so that cirrhosis does not occur. This also means that we diagnose the cases 
before cirrhosis has developed. And this finally means that we avoid liver transplantation.